Hi guys, welcome back. In the last video, we sort of made a start discussing how we will uh, approach this randomizing procedure. Um, because obviously at the moment, we don't have any randomization. So we want to add some parameters. We want to process the points and add some attributes that the L system can read in order to generate different random values per copy. Okay, so this is a process called copy stamping and has been around in Houdini for ages. It's one of the really, really cool things uh, that makes Houdini so unique when it comes to doing stuff like this. Um, so the way we're going to do it, we're going to take these points that we have on our line here and we're going to add some random attributes to each one of them, which will then be picked up by the copy when it copies itself onto it. All right, pretty straightforward. So let's make the connections. So we've already got our for each point loop here, and we're going to connect our point geometry into it. And as you can see now, we're working on individual points. Okay, so we can start to add in those random values. And like we did with the leaves geometry, we need to create a unique identifier for each iteration of this and that information is held in the meta import node so on the for each begin we can create a meta import node and this is going to hold a bunch of detail attributes here it tells you what it's uh, what it's holding we've got this iteration value which is going to be key for us because this is iteration zero and then one two three however many we've got and we can use that to drive a random number so let's get started. We are going to build these attributes using a wrangle node. Okay, so we'll connect that in. And I'm just going to call this attributes so I know what is going on. The first thing we want to randomly iterate is this seed value here. So this, in on our, back on our L system node, this geometry random seed value, we want to pick every time we copy onto a point we want to randomly select a new seed value so this accepts integers so we can create a huge range of integer random integers so in the attributes node we're going to specify a new integer attribute called rand seed okay and the next expression you is really useful. Um, it should become familiar with you when you're working with randomness, taking something and fitting it into a fitting a random value into a range. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do a fit01 expression, and the value that we want to fit is a random value that's taken from that meta import, that iterations value. So we need to specify that detail. Okay. And where we need to get it from is from this node here. So we plug that into the first input or the second input, if you like. So that goes into there so we can reference it in this detail expression here. So just to remind you, look, it's telling us on the metadata node there that it's creating detail attributes called iteration. So we need to reference that in our wrangle node. So we can tell it which input to look for, which is input one. So remember, this is the zero index. This is the first index. The attribute that we're interested in is called iteration. And then it's just the zero index of that. Okay, and then we can close that expression. So that now is grabbing that iteration value from the metadata node. And again, we'll multiply that by a random seed value, sorry, plus rather than multiply. So that's our random expression complete. So it's gonna take that unique number, add a random value to it, and then, in fact, we will put multiply there. <laughs> uh, and then we want to fit it between two values. And because this is just a random seed, we can pick any value. So we can say, pick a value between minus a thousand and a thousand, something like that. Okay, so we get a little warning here that's saying, because this is an integer value, this is generating a float value. So there's a sort of a type mismatch there. So we can just cast that as an integer and that clears that error. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is take this random seed value and somehow plug it into this L system random seed value here so it can read it from 
from the geometry. So with that set up, we can plug in our copy to points node, okay, and then set our copy to points node to be the output of our for each loop. So those attribute values are being passed through there. And as you can see at the moment, nothing has really changed. So we need to specify on the else system node where to pick up that random seed value from. And the way we can do that is by adding a spare parameter to this node. A spare parameter allows us to pass data from a for each loop to other nodes. So in the cog menu here, we can add a spare input. Okay, and if we scroll down, you can see we've got this spare input here. And this is looking for a node. It's looking for a node from where to pick up. Where can I pick up these attributes that you want to reference? So if we take our attribute node here where we've just built our random seed and just drag it into there, we can make a reference directly to it. And now you'll see what happens. It's encompassed our L system within this for each loop, giving us a very, very clear representation that this L system node now is attached to this for each loop. Okay. So now that we've got this connection made, we can reference that point value, that point attribute in our random seed value. And the syntax to do that is with the point expression. So just like we've used in the past using the primitive expression, we can reference data on a point using the point expression. Um, so minus one indicates that this point expression is referencing a parameter on this node, okay? And the point number that we're always that we're interested in is point zero. It's always going to be point zero because if you remember the for each loop deals with one point at a time and that point will always be point zero. Okay. The next argument is going to be what's the attribute's name. And we've given it a name of rand seed. Okay. And the next is the index. So is it X, Y, or Z? Well, it's just one value, so we can put zero and we can make those connections. And then straight away, you can see we're starting to pick up some randomness on our generator. Cool. So that's not the only thing we want to randomize. We might want to randomize this generations tab as well. So we can say go between five and five and 20. We'll see where that gets us. So again, we can come back to our attributes. And again, we want to create an integer, but we'll call this one rand gen. And we can just copy that entire expression there and then just make some changes. I'm going to change what the random seed value is. And make sure you change these values. Um, if you try to generate a thousand iterations of this, it will most likely crash your computer. <laughs> so we're going to say the generations we want are between five and say 21. Okay, cool. So with that in place, we can do that exact same process, but now reference this random generation it, uh, attribute that we've created. So we'll move back to the L system and use that same point expression here. So again, sorry, minus one to reference that it's coming from a spare parameter input. Point zero, and then our attribute name is rand gen and then the zero index again. Okay, so again, we're starting to add more randomness to our, to our system there, okay? Just one more time, um, any attribute that you want to randomize on the L system node, you can do in this way. So, you know, if, if you want to really go crazy and start using that point expression in some of these variables. So you can really go to town and randomize these values using that same point expression. And what, we, what I think we'll do is we'll just randomize this value. So we'll find a minimum value. So we'll say between point one and like, it starts to go a bit crazy about point six. So we'll just do that again one more time. And because the syntax is the same, we can copy that paste it. With this example, we're not generating uh, an integer value. We want to generate a float value. Okay. And then we can plug in those values that we said we liked, which was 0.1 and 
um, 0.6 And let's change the name. We'll call this random noise. And then we'll make that connection onto our variable B there. So we can, again, using the same expression, and we call this one rand noise. Just let me double check that. And you can really sort of dial these values in based on what you need. Okay, so we're just starting to generate some interesting randomness and random shapes there. And we can go all the way back to our line here and start making some quite big changes to uh, how we are generating these. You know, we could go back to the resample node and start adding in more, more or less. And we're starting to create that interesting randomness throughout. Okay. And if we look, we're still at less than a thousand polygons, so probably you know close to sixteen hundred triangles, which is you know it's not very much at all. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll continue to refine this, and we'll continue to add more layers of randomness into the system, just to make sure that we're really starting to create some uh, interesting looks when we create these um, these ran random instances for our game engine. So hopefully that was useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.